So now I've explained how to create a game in Java with a map which contains rooms, the rooms contain treasures, the player can move around the rooms taking and dropping treasures. So what's left to do? Well, I want to be able to save the game state and reload it later on so I can continue playing where I left off. But this sounds like really a complicated task because I need to stay, save all those rooms, all the treasures, uh, the player's position, any treasures the player owns in the inventory, and so on. Well, if I did it one by one, that would be a complicated task, but thanks to the power of Java serialization, it's really, really simple, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So here, this is my game. I've got the adventure game.java uh, file loaded. This is the main file, the file that runs when I run the program. And this is the main uh, loop, if you like, the main uh, method. And it just has this loop that continues running till the, the game uh, gamer quits. So I've added this switch case statement here, and if the player enters save or load, then save game or load game executes. Let's have a look at save game. So it's this simple method up here. So this is actually quite a short method to do quite a lot of work. Now, if you've never used serialization before, it might seem peculiar that you can do so much in such a small bit of code. Really, the only important bit of code, the bit of code that uh, saves the entire game is this one line, uh, which, which calls the right object method. There's a little bit more to it than that, but I'll, I'll show you this now. So, um, right, first of all, you need to save the data in streams. A stream is just a long series of bytes. I need a file output stream to save and a file input stream to load the data. Uh, and I pass to those the name of the file on disk that I want to save or load from. Now, in order to write those bytes as the data of actual objects, I have to pass one of these file streams to an object stream, either object output stream when saving, and object in input stream when loading. I'll show you the load game so you can compare those two methods on screen. Now, according to the Java API reference, let me show that here. You can just go on to the uh, Oracle site to see the reference. According to that reference, uh, an object output stream writes primitive data types and graphs of Java objects to an output stream. The objects can be read, that is reconstituted, using an object input stream. In other words, I can pass my streams, and a stream, remember, is just a stream of bytes, it's a, it's a whole line of, of data. I can pass those streams of data to these object streams, object output stream or object input stream, and let them figure out how to save and reload the data of the actual objects. Now, going back to my code, the real magic of this is that I don't have to do this one object at a time. I can pass my top level object, that is the object that contains a whole load of other objects, and in this case it's my game, the game contains the map, the map contains the rooms, the rooms contain the treasures, and so on. Well, I don't have to go through all those objects saving their data. I call, I, I can just use my top level object, uh, the game, and then when I call write object with the game or um, read object, I can reconstitute the entire game object and all it contains very, very simply. So that's the magic, as I say, of serialization. Now, there's one other thing I have to do. Every class that wants to be serializable, that is, that wants to be able to have its objects saved and loaded through serialization has to declare itself to be serializable. And the way to do that is, I'll go into my game class, where is game here, game here. The way to do that is to implement java.io.serializable. Now that is the, uh, a Java interface and that informs Java that this class, the class that implements this, can be serialized. It's available for serialization. If you don't do that and you attempt to serialize objects, um, then you will get a, an exception, an error of the not serializable exception type. So I've gone through um, all my classes and you can see they've all been marked as implementing that so they can all be automatically serialized. 
let me show you this in action. I'll run my game. So I'm in room one and let me do something. I'll take the carrot. I'll go south. Um, so I'm now in the cave. Drop the carrot. Okay, so that's the state I'm in. I'm south in the cave. Uh, there's a carrot here, and I have nothing in my inventory, but the carrot is in the cave. It's been dropped. I'll save. Tells me I've been the game has been saved. So that has saved the game state. Now remember that cave and the carrot is in the cave. I'll quit. Right, so later on I come back and I play my game. I'm back in room one, um, and that's the troll room, and there's the carrot here. But I want to restore the game to where I was, so I'm going to load. Now I should say when you go on to develop your own game, you might want to let the user, of course, specify different file names. I'm keeping it simple. I'm always using the uh, one save file, but I'm putting load, game loaded. Let me look. Right, I'm no longer in the troll room, which I was when I saved. I'm in the cave, because that's where I was when I saved the game. And the carrot is in the cave because I dropped it there. So that's the power of serialization. I've serialized my game, saved the game state, and then I've reloaded the game, remind you of the code here, in these very, very simple bits of code through the power of serialization. So I've now got, if you've been following the series, you've now got a, a workable game framework. You, you know how to create maps, you know how to create rooms, uh, how to move the player around, how to save and reload the game. If you want more on the nitty gritty details of writing an adventure game, I've got a whole book on the subject. It's written mainly in C Sharp, but it has a few examples in Java and Ruby. Uh, and that goes into far more detail on, on how to write an adventure game. I hope this gives you a start. Adventure games are great pro programming projects, a lot of fun and quite challenging. So go and write your own adventure game. Download the source code for these lessons from bitwisebooks.com. This Java series is based on the C Sharp programs that form the basis of the little book of adventure game programming available from Amazon.